I'm Dr. Victoria, and this is George. I'm Dr. Victoria, and today I am joined by some very special guests. First off, I'd like to introduce Dr. Gregory Woods, who is an orthopedic surgeon. And today we are going to be talking about knee replacements. Now, Dr. Woods does the football coverage for our local high school football teams to keep our young athletes in tip top shape. And that's how George met Dr. Woods because Dr. Woods was caring for George's team. And when George's dad was having knee pain that just wasn't getting better, there was only one person he wanted to send him to. And I'd like to introduce Mr. Weso, George's dad. So Dr. Woods, Mr. Weso has been having really bad osteoarthritis and he's come to talk about some different options for treatment. He probably needs knee surgery, but he'd like to know, are there other options available? Yes, if he hasn't had any treatment up to this point, we do have non-surgical things that we can do. The first thing we do is do a good history and a physical examination. And in that physical examination, we'd see how much motion he's lost, if he's got any deformity, and where his pain is located at. And, and we'd also do some x-rays and we do weight bearing or standing films um, because that compresses down the joint just like if he was walking along so we can see how much cartilage is worn down in his knees. When we do that, then we can get an idea as to how bad the, the knee joints are and whether or not if he's got cartilage left, we try and treat him non-surgically. If he doesn't have any cartilage left, then there's not a lot of things that we can do to grow new cartilage back, so we talk about surgical options. But if he has cartilage left, and if he's not really quite ready for surgery, we'll talk about other options. And they could range from physical therapy, where we do some exercises to help strengthen his knee and to help with motion. The second thing would be oral anti-inflammatories that treat the inflammation in his knees and that will help with the swelling and the pain and help him function better without um, having to have surgery. If the oral anti-inflammatories don't work, we have injectables that we can do in the knee joint, such as corticosteroids. Now, corticosteroids have been around for a long time and they really work well, but they have side effects and they don't last real long. The average is about three months as far as relief and about 60 to 70% of people get relief when you inject them with steroids. We have other substances, um, we call it the gel stuff that is hyaluronic. And hyaluronate is a normal component of normal joint fluid and when you get arthritis, it gets used up and we put it back in the joint, then the inflammation goes down and your pain gets better. When those work, and it's only about 60 to 70% of people, they tend to last longer than the steroids, anywhere from six to 18 months. But a lot of times, all those injectable things start to not work anymore. And when that happens, we talk about surgery. So it is reasonable for some patients to try some more conservative measures rather than going straight to surgery. Yes, and we have one more injectable that's, that's gotten some new data that shows it's probably as good uh, as the gel shots okay. and that's platelet-rich plasma or PRP. Unfortunately it's not covered by insurance but it's not terribly expensive uh, compared to like bone marrow or stem cells which okay. is talked about a lot. There's not real good data on stem cells as far as relieving arthritis but PRP injections are as good or better than the gel shots and can provide relief. It's your own blood that's spun down and you get to the plasma layer and we inject that back into the knee joints and people get good relief for it and we offer that here. That's really exciting that we do have some new new options for patients. Yes. And so say our patient and Mr. Waiso is ready for knee surgery. Is there a good time for knee surgery or a right age to be having something like that done? Well, most people that have routine osteoarthritis or wear and tear arthritis um, are at least in their 50s or 60s or 70s. We have a few that have had trauma and surgery in the past and may wear their knee out sooner than that. And if it's down to bone on bone, we offer them surgery. And the surgical options can range from partial knee replacement 
So like if they just wore down underneath their kneecap, we can resurface that. Okay. If they've just worn down on one side of the joint, medial or lateral, we can resurface that alone. Or if they've got more than one part of the joint that's wore down, we can do a full knee replacement. And I have had both of mine replaced myself, and it works very well. All right. Well, it's nice to hear there are different options, and it's not one surgery fits all. That's correct. And Dr. Woods has talked about the partial knee replacement in another video that I'll link down if you'd like to check it out. Now, so you take the patient for surgery, but what does the patient ever see? Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about maybe the surgery itself and what the patient can expect during the surgery? Well, during the surgery, most of them are asleep or at least sedated if we do a regional anesthetic like a spinal anesthetic. Afterwards, they'll have a dressing with an incision that's uh, closed up and we often do not use staples. We use more plastic surgery type closures to make for a nice scar. And that's what most people see is the scar. Mm -hmm. But what we're aiming for, not only the skin healing, is the deep tissue healing. And that takes, takes some time. Okay. The partial knee replacement, actually, because we don't have to make as big an opening or, or split the quadriceps tendon to flip the kneecap over like you do for a full knee, the, the healing time on the partial knee is much, much quicker, almost twice as fast. Oh, wow. And the amount of therapy they have to do is about half the amount that you'd normally do after a, a total knee replacement. A total knee replacement is about four to eight weeks of therapy, depending on how motivated you are and how much of it you can do on your own. All right, so you talked a little bit about the therapy afterwards. Let's talk about that period when my patient wakes up, they're done surgery. How long are they going to be in the hospital in most cases? If, if they're young, healthy people uh, in the 40, 50 range with not many other diseases, we'll, we'll sometimes send them home the same afternoon. Okay. Um, if their surgery is done late in the day, we'll, we'll keep them over to the next morning. But most people go home the next day. The surgery for the partial knee is only about an hour long. The surgery for the full knee is about an hour and 15 minutes long. And uh, we're able to get those patients up the day of surgery and walk on it. And part of the way we do that is we have a multimodal pain management program. And that means we give different things. So we give oral medicine before surgery. We give injectable medicine in the, in the knee joint itself at the time of surgery. And after surgery, we use different kinds of pain medicines, not just narcotics. And it has minimized the use of narcotics so that people aren't as drowsy. They don't have the constipation or nausea that you get with narcotics. So we're able to get people up and going. And a lot of times people are pushing us saying, I'm ready to go home. Can I go home? Oh, wow. And so if they meet all the criteria from a therapy standpoint, then, then we send them home. What kind of precautions do they need when they get home? Well, we have them use a, a walker or crutches okay. and until they've been approved by their therapist to quit using it. And basically, you got to have your strength back in a normal gait to get rid of the walker. And it differs for different people how long they use it, anywhere from uh, a week on some of the partial knee replacements to three to four weeks on some of the the full knee uh, patients, but most people on average, it's about two weeks okay. where they're using a walker and then can go to a cane uh, at that point in time. And then what about recovery? We're doing physical therapy, we're getting some pain medication, but now uh, I wanna get back to my regular self. How long does that often take patients? Again, with the partial knee, it's quicker. Um, the full knee replacement, g doing things like playing golf, uh, walking for exercise. Those things are at about the six to eight week range after surgery. A little bit earlier with the partial knee replacement. I've seen some about playing golf at four or five weeks after surgery. And then we try and avoid high impact activities. But you know, we got people playing bocce ball and walking for exercise, doing, doing weights to continue their strengthening program, uh, doing the elliptical, doing hiking. We tend to try and avoid activities that involve twisting, like snow skiing or water skiing. Most people can get back to normal activities uh, fairly quickly afterwards. Oh, wow. So it sounds like lots of those regular activities. I know Mr. Waisel loves hiking with George. So that's an activity he could return to. Yes. 
and be pain free. Everyone likes to think, well, what can I do to prepare for this? Are there some things that patients should do beforehand? Uh, well, we have an education program so they know okay. what to expect, okay. but we also start them on home exercises. Okay. A lot of the same exercises we'll do after surgery because then you train yourself that this is how I can do it and do it safely. It also helps with strengthening, especially your upper body, because if you're using a walker, you need the upper body mm. strength to help get around but also with doing the, the leg exercises and build up your strength and that muscle memory so you know how to do them after surgery. Okay, fabulous. And for you going into surgery, are there some things that make you reconsider, hey, maybe this isn't a great candidate for surgery, or are there t things that would give you pause before doing a surgery? Well, we always do a medical workup before surgery to make sure that people are safe to undergo surgery, considering their heart, their lungs, their medications. Do they take blood thinners? Do they have diabetes? And we want their diabetes under control because if your blood sugar is high, then it's more of a problem in healing and a risk for infection. So we try and do what we call optimization. Okay. where we'll get them in touch with the right people to make sure that they're as, as tuned up and as healthy as possible before they undergo surgery. All right. Well, thank you so much to Dr. Woods and Mr. Weiso for joining us today. And thank you to you, our healthcare team. And we're so excited that we get to have our patients active and mobile and doing the activities they enjoy with those they care about. I hope you'll join us next time. Bye-bye.